responsible If you try and be patient It pays off while you're waiting The seeds you water will grow The rest will follow Cause this life's what you're making And some rules are for breaking Destiny will play its role, you know Welcome to uh, The Ranch virtually. Uh, my name is Jansen Lemley, uh, and I am uh, the camping uh, director for Southeast Michigan, uh, as well as uh, Debray Scott Ranch, uh, and I will be uh, your main uh, presenter and facilitator this evening. Uh, so again, thank you so much to all of you that are on. Um, first, I want to say thank you uh, to those of you uh, that have been coming uh, to Debray uh, year after year after year, uh, and uh, we just thank you so much for your loyalty. And your commitment uh, to the ranch. Uh, and then I also want to say thank you uh, to those of you that are on the call that uh, maybe haven't made your decision yet on where uh, your troop is going to be camping in 2021 uh, uh, and you're considering DMRA Scout Ranch as a possibility for your unit. Uh, and so uh, tonight uh, we're going to go through a couple of different things. Uh, we are pretty much uh, going to take an overview of all that the ranch has to offer. Um, let you know about some of the new things that are um, coming up for this um, camping season uh, and want to make sure that we equip your unit no matter whether you're already part of uh, the plans for uh, 21 at the ranch or if you're still waiting uh, for your um, your uh, patrol leader council uh, to make that a decision on where your trip's going to go. So let's go ahead and uh, jump on into it. Uh, tonight, um, this is a webinar format, uh, so if you have any questions, um, please submit your questions into the chat room. Uh, I have a couple of um, friends that are also on the call uh, that are going to help to answer those as we go along the way. Uh, and then there will also be a time at the end uh, for some Q&A as well. Uh, and there will also be a slide again at the end that also has my, um, my cell phone number and my email address. Uh, for you uh, to reach out if you have any questions, or concerns, or comments uh, that I can help you with. So let's go ahead and get started and jump right on in. 
So uh, I'm extremely excited for what camp has to offer this coming summer. Uh, there's so much uh, that uh, I want to talk about. There's so much that is still unknown as we're trying to navigate this crazy uh, time that we're in. Uh, but ultimately, uh, myself and the DBRA uh, camp staff are committed to providing your troop uh, with a camping experience this coming summer. Not sure exactly what that might look like, depending on restrictions that we might be in or the climate of, um, of, of our country and our world. But nonetheless, we will be delivering a scouting program to your troop this summer. So what's new? So things that I'm excited about, um, having uh, talked with some of you um, uh, at, at camp, um, at round tables, um, hearing some of um, the things that I've read on the surveys, um, some of the things that we're rolling out. So we're gonna get more into these in a little bit, but I just wanna briefly go over each of them. Uh, we are doing an overhaul uh, in our program areas. Uh, our first year a camper a program is going to be um, called the Pedro Patrol, uh, which is kind of like a throwback uh, to what it used to be called back in the day. Uh, and so we'll talk about that in a bit. Our trade skills area, um, our high adventure uh, partnership, our duty to God a program, uh, our casual lunches. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that. That's a fun idea. Uh, Camp Docs, um, a, which is a virtual uh, health forum. And then our uh, communication plan for the um, coming months, and that will be our monthly webinars, and then also our 10 day out meetings as we get closer to summer camp. So program areas that we offer at DeBorey Scout Ranch, uh, we have a variety of different options and opportunities um, for your scout, no matter what age and rank uh, your scouts are, uh, we can accommodate uh, and provide a great experience uh, while you're at the ranch. So. Uh, Again, the one that I'm probably the most proud of is our Pedro Patrol, uh, because it's my opinion that the first year uh, that a scout comes to camp is the most important year. Uh, that's where the memories are really made, and that's where we can hook them uh, and get them excited about all that scouting has to offer. And so at DBRA, uh, we have um, what I believe is one of the best first year camp camper programs, not just within the state of Michigan, uh, but um, within the Midwest, but I'm a little biased. Uh, we also offer um, aquatics, um, so both a swimming area and a uh, boat docks, uh, climbing, ecology, conservation, handicraft, outdoor skills, uh, shooting sports, including shotgun, rifle, and archery, our silver spur corral, um, because at Debray we are a working horse ranch, uh, and then also our trade skills area. So let's dive into the first one, our Pedro uh, Patrol, um, our new uh, program. Um, that's kind of an overhaul for those of you that have come to camp before in the past. Um, so this will be a focus on um, scouts that are uh, that have the scout rank. They're brand new. They just crossed over, uh, and we are going to be um, providing them an opportunity to work on tenderfoot, second class, and first class requirements. Scouts will also have the opportunity uh, to work on merit badges um, in the midst of that uh, program. So uh, we want them to advance in rank. We also want to give them an opportunity uh, to earn a merit badge or two. Um, new this year, um, in addition to everything else that, we're, that I'm throwing at you, uh, we're going to be doing an overnight cowboy cowgirl experience at camp uh, where part of our five mile hike, we're going to hike on out um, and the first year staff and the first year campers um, are going to have a cowboy overnight experiences, horses included. Um, the other thing that we're doing is a um, what I call a taste of the ranch, uh, and that is where you're going to be able to experience um, all the different aspects. Because as a first year camper, uh, the thing that um, I think is most important is you get it, is you dabble in everything that's at camp. Because ultimately, I want all of our scouts to be so excited about all of the opportunities that they want to come back the year after and the year after that. And so we want to make sure that they get to uh, dabble or get a taste of everything at the ranch. Uh, the other thing that is new this year, Patrol will be a standalone uh, program with a dedicated staff. In years past, it had been um, within our outdoor skills area. And this year, uh, because I believe it's so important, we'll have a dedicated director and staff to provide your scouts with a great first year experience. The other new area uh, that we were actually planning to roll out this past summer um, is our trade skills um, area. Uh, and so at that, so, so the thought with the, with the trade skills is we wanna be able to um, meet our scouts with where they are. And some of them have a real interest uh, and um, some of the hands-on merit badges and providing them uh, with the opportunity to work on welding, automotive uh, maintenance, and for metalworking. I uh, just had a question uh, come in and said, uh, let me read it here real quick. For all scouts who are ending last year or able to attend 
Um, so any scout, so, so the question is, um, for scouts who entered scouting last year but were unable to attend camp due to the pandemic, can they attend the first year program? Yes, it is, um, at the, um, it is the decision of the Scoutmaster and the SPL to determine who should be a part of that a program. Whether you're a first year scout and you just crossed over or you're a first year scout, um, you need to determine where your scouts are at uh, in their rank advancement and determine where um, they would best fit in camp. Is it, purely on, is it purely working on merit badges or would they benefit from working on the tenderfoot second class and first class requirements? So, all right, so the trade skills area, we are excited to be offering that to um, all of you. Um, we've, we've dabbled in bits and pieces of this um, throughout the years, uh, but now we're gonna be giving it a um, dedicated area and staff uh, to provide your scouts with that experience. Um, question I came in, will the Pedro uh, program be a half day uh, program? Uh, I am still working on developing all of that. And so some of the things that um, uh, as we get in the months ahead with our with our webinars we're going to be rolling out um, our actual detailed schedule and um, some other things like that so i'll talk about that in just a minute um, new also to camp this year our high adventure um, opportunities um, so at the ranch uh, we've always offered a ranch hand program so i wanted to make sure that i called attention to that uh, and that's where a um a scout can participate uh, and a Wrangler in training a program, work on Amer badges, but also be working hand in hand with our uh, Wrangler team uh, that uh, facilitates the horsemanship merit badge and also um, working on things like farm mechanics uh, and welding um, up at our barn area. The other thing that is unique this year is we are partnering with Cole Canoe Base, uh, which is our um, camp to the north, about two hours up I-75. Uh, and they have an established high adventure um, program and a dedicated staff that have already been offering it. And so you're able to come to Debray with your troop. And then if you wish from there, we'll put you on a, um, on a bus, send you on up to Cole, um, to wherever you're going to go on your high adventure trip, whether it's on the, uh, the Rifle River, the Asaba, Pitcher Rocks up in the UP, and then you can be bused back to camp in time for our Friday night festivities. And so it allows you uh, to get a, uh, a more well-rounded experience um, and a partnership where we can have um, full high adventure programs for your scouts to participate in. So I'm really excited about that and the partnership that we've been working with uh, with uh, Cole Akinu Base and Greg Zidane, our high adventure uh, director. All right, um, camp-wide programs that we offer at DBRA. Uh, we do a, a Western uh, night, uh, which will also be our family night this year. Uh, we offer a water uh, carnival, uh, which is um, uh, a patrol-based uh, competition that takes place down at the waterfront. And so super excited uh, to take that to a, a new uh, level this year. Uh, we do a cowboy um, action shoot um, that is over at our shooting sports range uh, that uh, is uh, pretty much the only place in Michigan that you can participate in cowboy action uh, shooting. I'm excited for that. Um, Tandem Climbs, uh, which is kind of like a, like a tag team climb uh, that takes place over at our climbing wall. Uh, we do game nights um, hosted out of the Handicraft um, building. Uh, we do two um, outposts that take place. Uh, one is for wilderness survival. Um, part of the merit badge there is uh, you need to not only build a shelter, but sleep in it. And then we also offer the search and rescue uh, merit badge at uh, DBRA. And um, we do a camp-wide search and rescue exercise. So um, some kids sign up and they get lost and the other ones within the merit badge are going to go find them. Uh, and uh, it makes it, a, makes it a fun experience, especially when we have 1,800 acres of a beautiful ranch of property uh, to get lost and then found again. Uh, and then at Debray, we're also um, bringing back um, our awards, which are the Longhorn Awards and the Adventure of Patrol. Um, and this information, uh, there's more a detail that you guys can find in the Leader's Guide that will be coming out here shortly. Uh, new this year at Adibre, uh, we are taking um, a um, stronger focus on duty to God. Uh, and so um, what that means is um, we will be providing a camp-wide interfaith uh, service. Um, each day we will be providing uh, mini uh, chapels, uh, about 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, we're going to be doing those before one of our meals. We, we're still determining what makes the most sense within our schedule, um, but providing a, the opportunity for a scout to be reverent in, um, in their daily lives. And the other part of that is uh, we're going to be introducing a chaplain's aid award, which scouts can work on in addition 
uh, to um, the things that I, I mentioned, uh, participating in graces um, and um, uh, in some service. So we'll tie together the opportunity to make sure that um, a scout, um, if they choose to exemplify that part of the Duty to God a program, uh, they can earn that as well. Uh, just had a side note, a question that popped in here. Uh, will ILS be offered for adult uh, training? ILS will be offered, but in a different sort of sense. And ILS, for those of you that don't know, is Introduction to Outdoor Leader Skills, which is a required training uh, to um, uh, be um, trained as an assistant scoutmaster or scoutmaster. So the way that it will be offered is it will be in conjunction with our Pedro um, Patrol. Um, the scouts working on their tenderfoot second class and first class requirements. If you look at the IOLS syllabus, uh, a lot of that is exactly the same. And so you'll be in partnership with working on that uh, and then having um, some of the more book work being done um, by some of our uh, training um, team volunteers. So yes, there will be an opportunity for that. Great question. Um, all right, so food service. I mentioned uh, our casual lunch. Uh, so uh, the, at Debray, uh, we actually eat outside, kind of. Uh, we have uh, the Hay Pavilion uh, located in our Jack Lord uh, subcamp. And so right outside of that, we have our flag poles, our assembly field, and we'll do our morning assemblies, our flag raisings, or lowerings, our announcements, all that stuff out there. Uh, and then from there, uh, we will head on in uh, to the pavilion um, for our meals. Uh, and that will be how we serve our breakfast and our dinner uh, program. Um, but this year at Adi Bray, uh, we're going to be taking a little bit more of a um, more of a casual approach when it comes to lunch, uh, and it'll be an open dining experience. And so you can come as go, come and go as you please within that hour. Uh, and so uh, if you choose to not eat lunch that day and you want to take a nap, you can do that if you wanted. But the food's going to be plentiful and delicious, and you'll have the opportunity um, to. Um, just kind of hang out with whoever you want, come, uh, come and go, um, allows, and then that will also roll into our uh, relaxation or siesta time. So, all right. Um, I'm going to pause here real quick. Um, has the deadline to apply for camp staff passed? No, we are actually just uh, ramping up for our camp staff, um, um, our um, hiring our process. We're going to be jumping in full force to that uh, coming in January. Um, so you can apply online um, on our website at michiganscouting.org. Um, other question uh, came in here, what about troops that cook for, uh, for themselves? Uh, you have the opportunity to opt into a patrol style um, cooking if you so choose. Um, however, I want to make it noted that at DBRA, we do provide a dining hall uh, program. And so it's not just food, uh, but we provide the skits and the songs and the hoopla and the, com and the camaraderie of hanging out with the, with the staff. So you can choose to cook in your campsite and we will support that, uh, but know that our dining hall uh, program uh, is where I really think that it's at and you get the full camp experience at the ranch by doing so. Um, and another question I came up, will um, casual lunch be hot food? Yes, it will be hot food, um, but um, on some of the days we'll have the opportunity to, to grab it and go as well. And we're still working that out with our cook staffs. You'll have that opportunity there. So. All right, um, and question came in about precautions in place for a COVID. Uh, we are going to um, table that question to the end. Um, next up is our Camp Doc. Um, this uh, was a program that we were rolling out um, as we approached the 2020 uh, camping a season. Uh, and so um, it's new to some of you, but maybe some of you are already in preparation uh, for it. Um, but what it is, is um, Camp Doc, uh, we are gonna have this as part of our expedited check-in process. Uh, it's an online health form uh, through a secure um, server. Uh, no more need to make uh, the copies of your health form and bring them to camp. Uh, you still need to have uh, the paper health form of Part C signed by your doctor, um, but what, what this will allow you to do is to upload all of the, um, the uh, your health forms into a secure space, uh, and then we can have an electronic binder um, where they are stored, uh, and our health officer can have access to them and then also be able to screen them prior to your arrival to camp uh, to make your check-in um, smoother uh, and also to um, uh, be able to identify or flag any scouts or adults that our health officer needs to touch base with. Um, but this will help us to streamline things uh, and also um, reduce the need for um, uh, kind of the old school a method of the binder uh, being lugged around um, and toted with you to and, to and from camp. Uh, and then that would also be something that you would have access to 
throughout the year. Um, so kind of a year round uh, perk for you uh, participating in that program. So let me take a look here and see if we have any other questions. All right. So at this time, um, I have a special guest that's on the call uh, that I wanted to um, uh, uh, let speak for a few minutes. Uh, we have Mike uh, Solgrove with us. He is um, part of the Camp Envisioning uh, Task Force. Uh, and as I've been talking about some of the overhauls and the, and the revamping and the need and desire to make sure that we provide uh, your troop with the best experience possible, um, I wanted to uh, let Mike talk uh, uh, because uh, the things that his team as guiding our camp staff in are the things that we'll be applying to our camp operation this summer at DeBerre. So Mike, I'm going to give you the floor. Uh, thank Mike. you, Jason. I appreciate that. It's, um, it's great to be with you tonight, and I hope that uh, coming through nice and clear here. Um, this year, the, um, uh, the, you know, the leadership of the Council Outdoor Programs uh, team have uh, agreed to um, uh, support and, uh, and provide as a promise and a commitment for a new legendary camp service uh, program. Uh, the program I wrote a few years ago for all of our resident camps. And so we'll be asking uh, each of the camps to be operating under this procedure. It'll include a new camp mission statement, which uh, Jansen may be showing you a little bit later on. Uh, it'll also include a commitment to five key core areas that every camp staff in every single resident, Michigan resident camp, will commit themselves to providing uh, the very best they can. First uh, begins with uh, a clear and constant communications. Uh, tonight's webinar being provided by Jansen and all of the uh, resident Boy Scout uh, Scouts camp directors, Scouts BSA camp directors are happening this week. This is an ongoing commitment by the leadership team of the, of the uh, council to provide monthly uh, a, an immediate contact to anyone who wants to reach them through the uh, webinar trainings or directly by email or to Facebook or however you so choose to do so socially. The key first thing here is that no one will be waiting more than 24 hours to receive a comment back from their camp director about their camp program and questions that they may have in, uh, in for their resident camp for this coming summer. Constant, clear communications is a commitment of this outdoor program team uh, to each of our resident camp participants their scouting units and their children that will be coming to our camps. Next comes the uh, quality camp staff that will be trained and hired by each of our resident camps. Uh, we've always trained great staff. We've always brought on great staff. But now we're committed to a longer training period, a more intense training period, a training period that focuses all on customer service at the youth level, at the leader level, and at the unit level. This focus on Commissioner uh, excuse me, on, 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 on the quality service is meant to show our deep dedication to providing the best possible staff that we can to answer and deliver a safe, quality, legendary uh, camp experience. Next comes a varied and enlightening and strong camp program. You'll notice that Jansen has tonight introduced several new programs that will be happening at DBRA. Each of our resident camps will be doing likewise in their, in their presentations. Uh, every program area, in addition to having merit badge program areas, are going to have additional programs that go on during the day, during the uh, dining hall programs, uh, during the evening programs that are varied than what you've seen before at previous camp outings at these particular resident camps. I applaud Jansen and his selection of uh, quality programs for this coming summer and know that each of the resident camps will be following his leadership and doing it likewise. Be watching for new and exciting programs at each of these camps. Uh, next comes uh, quality, safe facilities. Without a doubt, we want to have the very best uh, Scouts BSA resident camps that we can possibly have in our state. And our property teams, our camp property teams, our council property teams, our entire outdoor programs uh, uh, teams are working very hard to make sure that you see a lot of new stuff and quality things at your camps when you come back this summer. Ask about some of those things. You'll be excited to see uh, some of the wow factors that they put into some of these wonderful facilities that are guaranteeing a legendary camp service through quality uh, facilities. And lastly, you'll see a tune-up 
and a really great enhancement of the food services that are delivered throughout our resident camps. Uh, whether you're a, a cook in the campsite a, a unit or a cook, eat in the dining hall unit or come by for the casual uh, uh, luncheon that's being provided, especially at, uh, at DMRA, you will find the dining experience to be timely, quality, and quantitative, meaning that the quality of it and the quality of it will exceed your expectations. That's our promise and commitment to each of the units and to the children and to the adults who attend our programs and our camps. I applaud Jansen, I applaud our outdoor program teams, and I want you to all to know that we are dedicated to truly legendary camp, camp, camp service in the state of Michigan and the great Crossroads of America Council here in Michigan. So God bless uh, all of you. Thank you, Jen, for letting me be a part. You bet, Mike. Thank you so much for being on the call this evening. Um, you know, just hearing Mike talk, Mike, Mike comes from a camping back, background as well. And so uh, the things that he uh, talked about are things that he lived when he was a camp director back back in his day. Uh, and now taking um, the uh, tried and true practices that he implemented at his camps uh, and then expounding them to make sure that uh, we are all fo following suit with that. And so um, I'm extremely excited about the opportunity um, to blow your socks off, uh, to give you our version of good, uh, which for most of you will probably be great, uh, and uh, really uh, provide our scouts with um, that experience uh, that when they go back to school in the fall, and I realize it's a long way away, my, my favorite thing is on the first week of school back, every kid asks the other kid, what'd you do this summer? And any kid that comes to our camp or any of our camps, uh, usually the phrase that comes out of their mouth was, I got to go to scout camp, and let me tell you what I did. And so that's our promise is to make sure that we give those kids that this was the coolest thing they did in the summer of 21. So with that legendary camp service, uh, we need um, extraordinary people to help provide and deliver uh, that program to your units. Uh, and so I know somebody had asked a little bit earlier about um, camp staff applications. Uh, we are hiring both youth and adult staff. Um, and so for you staff, um, a uh, counselor in training can be 14 and up uh, and then paid staff um, from, from 16 and up. And then we need a plethora of adults, um, some in the range of 18 to 21. And then we need um, 21 and up for certain positions as well. And so the application is actually an online form that you fill out and submit. And we'll be conducting uh, interviews here um, in the coming month. Uh, and so, but that leads me to my next piece here. Um, we actually um, at DBRA Scout Ranch uh, have hired a new uh, year round program director uh, who will also serve as our summer camp director. Uh, and his name is Joseph Lewis, um, also known as Joe. Uh, and so you'll see an introduction uh, um, about Joe uh, coming out in the coming week. Um, but you guys are the first ones to hear about um, Joe uh, um, taking the reins. Uh, for those of you that were at Deeper 8 in previous years, um, Jerry D was our camp director, uh, and he recently retired to spend more time with his, um, with his family, his grandkids, his wife, uh, and so we're excited to have Joe, Joe on board. Joe is a Michigan guy. Uh, he comes from Flushing, Michigan. Uh, his first camp he ever went to was Camp uh, Topico from back in the day, and, but Joe, as a as a youth member of our organization, actually served on camp staff at DeBerry uh, back in 2012 or 2013, something along those lines. And then the past six years, he's actually worked over in Wisconsin as part of the Glacier Edge uh, Council um, at the Ed Bryant Scout Reservation. So after six years, uh, he's excited to come back uh, home to uh, Michigan uh, and excited to be our year-round program director at the ranch uh, and also uh, providing you the summer camp experience um, this coming uh, coming summer. So Joe has a wealth of knowledge and experience. And so um, him and I are going to be getting to work. He officially starts on January 4th. And so we're going to hit the ground running hard in the month of January and preparing for our first webinar, which we'll talk about here in just a few minutes, uh, to make sure that we have those details for you. Uh, because I want to make sure that as a uh, camp director uh, of our summer our resident camp uh, program, uh, that Joe is fully vested and understands uh, and owns all that's going on because he's the one, and I know he's going to be the one to deliver you guys that legendary camp um, experience uh, through him and his staff uh, in 21. 
So uh, one of the things that Mike had uh, talked about um, was our goal and need for transparency. Um, there's so much that's going on right now. Um, the, the target keeps moving, uh, whether we can do an event of this size or this size, or could we do something here or, or there? And so I know a few of you have asked in the chat about uh, what are the COVID precautions and where are we at? Um, it is our intention and plan right now to run a summer camp program at DeBray in 21. Um, now, that might be a little bit different than what we consider um, what might have happened in the summer of 2019 as our normal camp, um, but we're going to be offering a program. We just have to figure out what that would look like. Uh, and so, um, as the months come along, uh, we are going to be doing every fourth Wednesday of the month at 7 p.m., um, the DeBerry Ranch team, myself and Joe and some of our other uh, staff members are going to be bringing to you a webinar uh, that will bring you up to speed as more information rolls out, uh, whether it's our program schedule, um, how to utilize the online registration system, how to use the Camp Doc, a program. It's our job as the administration team of camp to equip you and inform you with as much information as possible. And it's also um, my, my goal to overwhelm you now, give you all the information that you need now so that when you as a leader come to camp, you're underwhelmed, you actually get to enjoy your vacation, enjoy camp, um, do whatever you, it is you wanna do, uh, do at camp. But if you have all that information and you are able to make those decisions prior to, it allows you uh, to really be the scout master that you wanna be at, at summer camp within your campsite. Uh, and so um, in the coming, um, so next month we, we will be rolling out what these um, specific, um, the topics are going to be for each of the webinars that are going to take place within uh, the next um, five months. Uh, and so uh, we'll be sending off a register and an email with that um, Ring Central link uh, for your unit to be, um, to participate in. Um, so stay tuned, uh, but do mark the fourth Wednesday of the, of the month um, in your uh, calendar. We'll also be recording those uh, sessions. Uh, so just in case you're unable to participate that evening, uh, we'll be able to provide you with a link so that you can uh, check those out at a later date. So in addition uh, to being um, uh, transparent um, and um, preparing you to uh, provide the best possible program when you come to camp this summer, uh, we're also going to be um, rolling out something that we are calling the 10 day out meeting. Uh, and again, what this is, is 10 days out um, so the so two Wednesdays before your arrival to camp, uh, we'll be rolling out um, a virtual meeting with our our administration team uh, to make sure that you have everything that you need. So um, from that from the point of the ten day out meeting to uh, your time at camp, um, again we're going to clear up as many issues that you might have, any questions or a concern. Make sure your unit sign up for all the things that you need to be signed up for. Uh, because when you come to camp, as with any, uh, any of our uh, summer camps, Sunday can be a little crazy, a little stressful. And so uh, the 10 day out meeting will reduce some of that stress uh, by making sure that we answer all those questions prior to your arrival. Uh, and so um, for who should attend this sort of a meeting, uh, this would be your senior patrol leader, uh, your scout masters, your summer camp uh, coordinator, if you have a designated person within your unit. Um, and uh, in our coming, in our upcoming uh, webinars, we'll be uh, officially putting those dates and times out, along with the links, uh, to make sure that um, each week will have its own uh, dedicated 10-day out meeting. So we're going to be running five sessions of summer camp, uh, and so there'll be five different uh, meetings depending on the session that you'll be participating. So uh, next up, um, a few of you um, in the chat had had already asked about our weekly um, summer camp schedule and what does that look like? Uh, and so um, DeBerre, for those of you that have not been, um, is a big facility. It's, uh, it's, again, it's 1,800 acres. Uh, and so um, inside of DeBerre um, is a, a couple of different subcamps. So in the Jack Lord a subcamp, if you're looking at one of our maps, uh, is where our resident camp uh, program will be held at. And so uh, you can see on here sessions one, two, three, four, and five that we'll be offering. Uh, there's also a Trail to Eagle, Eagle uh, program uh, that has been running at DeBerry uh, for over 25 years now. Uh, and that will take place um, during, um, the, during session two. So Trail to Eagle's camp will actually run in our Trout Lake subcamp and will run simultaneously to our resident camp uh, program. So Trail to Eagle is a provisional uh, based uh, program where, uh, so what that means is that your scout 
um, could go on their own. Um, and um, the Trail to Eagle program provides um, provides the camp with a um, with a patrol with a scoutmaster. And so uh, when you get to camp, everyone already has their own little troops that are that are formed. And so your scout could come to summer camp with us um, on on sessions one, three, four, or five. You could go somewhere else to Cole or to Rotary or to Gerber. Uh, and then if you have a scout that wants to come an additional week, they could also be going to Trail to Eagle. Uh, and that information can be found on the website as well, uh, michiganscouting.org. Uh, and also uh, by checking out the calendar link, uh, you find uh, those dates on the calendar and that will be, that will show up there. I uh, just got a, a question here from uh, Brian from uh, Troop 746. And he says, can you go over the payment uh, schedule? And that was perfect timing because we're going over the payment schedule. So. Um, uh, for summer camp, our fees um, are uh, the same as what you would have saw uh, this past year. Um, so our discounted fee um, for summer camp is $330 for a scout to attend camp. And that's if you follow our, our payment uh, schedule um, and get registered um, before um, May 7th. After May 7th, uh, the fee goes up to our, which is our regular fee of $345. Uh, we talked a little bit about our provisional um, opportunity. So a scout can go to camp on their own if they so choose uh, and can part and participate at 330 bucks. Uh, if a scout were to go a second week of camp, um, then that fee goes down to 199 bucks. Uh, and then the Weeblow uh, crossovers uh, that are taking place, uh, their um, er early bird rate um, is actually pushed back because we want to make sure that those scouts that are new to your troop uh, get to camp because uh, it's, it's, it's proven if you're not, you know, if you're new to your troop, if a scout goes to summer camp, the likelihood that they stay within the troop and within the program um, goes up drastically. Uh, and because that's where the magic happens, that's the kickoff for their scouting career. Uh, that's the highlight of the summer. And so we want to make sure that our um, new crossovers and new scouts um, get to camp um, in the summer. Um, so um, additionally, um, our adult fees are 160 bucks, um, or for part-time, which is a, which is a day fee of three of thirty-three uh, dollars. And then at our camp webinar we did last week on the seventh, we rolled out that our um, camperships, as we formally uh, called them, are now being called camp scholarships um, because a campership for uh, a typical mom and dad or aunt and uncle had no idea what a campership was because it was a it was a scout word uh, that made sense within our scouting world, uh, but to a typical family, they weren't quite sure what it meant. But nonetheless, we are still uh, we are still uh, providing those, um, and those uh, can be filled out online. It's an online form. Uh, you can print off um, a form to help you uh, prepare. Um, you and the scout and the family uh, can complete that form, but ultimately it needs to be submitted online um, to help us to collect all that information and present it before our scholarship committee. So um, additionally, um, talking about camp fees, um, uh, we have rolled out um, at the um, middle of last summer, or this past summer, um, so six months ago, we rolled out our 2021 20, Gold Unit Loyalty Plan. And so I uh, wanted to encourage all of you that if you've not yet signed up for summer camp, uh, that this is a great opportunity for you uh, to uh, commit to summer camp uh, and also get some added uh, bonuses along the way. And so uh, the Gold Unit Loyalty Plan, uh, instead of paying the $200 um, deposit uh, to book your spot at summer camp. Uh, it would actually be for 500 bucks. And so you pay a little bit more money up front and then these are the benefits that you get for that. So you would receive the, um, the 20, uh, 20 fees, which we've already uh, talked about. So we are locking those in. Um, you would receive two free adult leaders, which we just talked about. Each a leader cost $160 to attend camp. Uh, you would receive a special gold trim summer camp patch for all the participants. And you would also receive a special gold unit loyalty plan ribbon um, for your troops flag. And so uh, you get some added uh, bonuses for doing what you're already planning on doing, which is coming to summer camp. Um, but you need to commit by January. How do you do that? Uh, you go online to the website. Uh, you can book your um, reservation for, for summer camp. Um, so if you go to our, um, go to missionscouting.org. Uh, you can find our dates on the calendar, click in there, and then as you're going through the registration, it'll ask you the question, uh, do you want to be a gold unit um, member? 
And if you do, you click that a button and it will upgrade you from a basic unit of registration for the $200 a deposit to 500 uh, and lock you in for that gold uh, unit plan. But you got to get that done before January 31st. All right. Um, so um, next up, so there are some things that, that I mentioned that we are still working on. Uh, and so uh, as Mike talked, I want to be uh, transparent with where you are. With bringing Joe Lewis on as our new camp uh, director for summer camp, uh, there's still some things that are in flux as we're figuring those out and solidifying them. Uh, and so in our, coming, in our upcoming uh, webinars, we'll be rolling out the following, uh, which would be our mirror badge schedule. Um, after the mirror badge uh, schedule rolls out, we'll let you know what the prereqs uh, look like and the prereq sheet. What that means is that uh, those are the requirements that we are going, that we are not going to be able to complete or do at camp uh, that need to complete, need to be uh, completed by a scout prior to their arrival so that um, at the end of summer camp, if they did all the things that they were supposed to do while in attendance at camp, uh, showed up to all their classes, um, that they should, in theory, complete the complete the merit badge. And so uh, we'll be rolling that, that out so that your scouts can prepare. Uh, we'll also be rolling out the overall camp schedule, um, which would also include all of our program and activities, um, our summer camp uh, pre-order uh, t-shirt, uh, and the official leader's guide, uh, which should be coming out here at the end of this week. Um, and so for those of you that don't know, we have a, a leader's guide. We, as a collective um, summer camp team um, between DeBerre, Rotary, Cole, and Gerber. Uh, we're all part of the Michigan Crossroads Council. And so with that, uh, we're rolling out one leader's guide that has all the same administrative stuff. So in case you're still checking out which camp you want to go to, and then within that, the specifics for each of the camps are found within that leader's guide. So you'll be seeing that here real, real soon. So, um, Looks like we are, we are rolling right along and on time, which is where I wanted to uh, be at because uh, right now it's 7.40 um, and gives us about 20 minutes to go over some of the questions that you guys had. Uh, so I'm going to advance the slide here, give you guys the chance to um, jot down my information if you need it, um, and then to go over some of the questions that had come up. Um, so one of the questions that uh, came up was the ranch hand experience and dates. So to be a part of the ranch hand program, um, all you need to do is attend one of the five sessions of summer camp, um, and then we would um, work with our ranger or with our with our wrangler team, excuse me, uh, and get uh, that scout uh, plugged in, connected with the wrangler team that would facilitate that program. Um, one of the questions came up about COVID and our precautions that we would be. Uh, Taking. Um, so we actually tried a few um, back at the beginning of November out at the ranch. Uh, we provided an adventure weekend, which is our first attempt at doing merit badges and having a larger event out at the ranch. Uh, we were able to successfully um, have five troops out at camp, uh, which is about 48 scouts, uh, about 25 um, leaders, and about 15 staff. And over um, Saturday and Sunday, we were able to provide um, scouts with the opportunity to earn a couple of merit badges, also to have a flag ceremony uh, and a campfire program. Uh, we did pr primarily patrol style uh, cooking at that time uh, just because we, we weren't quite sure how to um, work within the climate of, of COVID and still provide a dining hall um, program. Um, but nonetheless, we were able to provide an experience for folks to get out to camp. And so um, the reason I say that is because I know that we can provide a camp program for your troop this coming summer. Again, not 100% sure what it's going to look like. We're working on a couple of different plans because as scouts, we want to be prepared. And so uh, I'm, I'm working on kind of the plan that would be in normal times uh, and then trying to back up some additional plans for a plan B and C. And those webinars are going to be crucial because as we watch uh, where our world's at in the coming weeks and months, uh, we will begin to adjust um, and to adapt to make sure that we're providing you with a high quality of program. So, um, but within that, um, as we figure out more and a risk management group and um, the physicians uh, that are a part of our scouting world um, provide us with the guidance um, and also working with um, the um, licensing group within the state of Michigan that provides us with the way in which we're supposed to um, govern and operate our, um, our camping operations. Uh, we'll be letting you know more. Um, I realize that's a little bit of a vague answer, um, but with the target constantly moving, we're still figuring out what that 
looks like. Uh, if you have specific uh, concerns, feel free to reach out to me. We'd love to have a candid, uh, candid eye conversation with you. Um, but right now, I don't know all of the answers, but know that we are working hard, not just at, at, at DBRA, but at all of our resident camps uh, to figure out how we provide you with a safe and high quality of program this coming summer. Um, another question came up about camp docs and the ability for leaders to do an upload. Um, to be honest, I don't, I, I'm still learning the program and, and how it all works, but in one of our webinars, we plan to do a um, camp doc uh, training for you so that you have an understanding of how to best support your families. Uh, and so don't entirely know yet, but hang tight. Uh, I'll be figuring that out. Um, another question had come in saying how many religious or how many religions included in the mini uh, chapel services that we're, that we'll be providing on a daily basis. So within that duty to God uh, program that I, uh, that I had uh, talked about, the goal of the program uh, will be an all encompassing. So it won't be specific to a particular faith, uh, but more so on a scout's ability to reflect on their reverence to, uh, to their God and providing them the opportunity uh, for meditation, prayer, uh, whatever they, they see fit. Um, and so as we work to develop that piece out, um, it will be um, focused on um, an interfaith um, model and also a broader a sense to make sure that we are meeting the needs of all of the scouts that attend um, camp this coming summer. Um, so those are the ones that I jotted down. Let me see here, a few other uh, questions. Um, Chris, if I missed anything yet. Nope, I think you got most of them, Jansen. Okay, um, so the question had come in about Weeblo's um, resident camp. Uh, so Weeblo's uh, resident camp will be taking place um, after our scout resident camp um, happens, and so that will take place at the end of July and into August. Uh, we'll be rolling out more information on that here in the coming months. Um, but we wanted to, um, knowing that our troops tend to be more prepared than our Cub Scout packs, we wanted to make sure we got the ball rolling and kicked with our open house for resident camp and then we'll be um, rolling out that information for our Weeblos at resident camp opportunities um, here soon. Um, so excited to see the question come up from a few of you uh, because uh, that means that you guys are thinking about it. I, I believe this coming summer is the summer that scouts are going to want to be outside, that camp is going to be booming, that when we get the opportunity to, to do what we do best and that's scout uh, in whatever fashion you in whatever fashion you do scouting, um, but I believe that at DBRA we're going to be bursting at, at the seams and people are going to be excited to participate. And so we want to make sure that we provide those uh, Weeblos and Cub Scout families with those opportunities to get out to camp as well. Um, let's see here. Will DBRA be doing uh, day camps for Cubs? Um, so as a summer camp operation, DeBray will not be doing, we will not be facilitating the day camps. Uh, there are a couple of districts that, um, that border the ranch and they will be providing their district day camps at DeBray. Um, but those are still being worked out and planned on. Um, and so we're still trying to, trying to figure out what that would look like. Um, all right. Uh, question came on here, can you briefly address the merit badge prereq sheet? So the merit badge prereq sheet, um, just to be clear as to what that is, it will be um, a um, spreadsheet that will have the merit badges listed on it and the prereqs, um, which are the um, requirements within the merit badge book that need to be completed prior to the scout's arrival to camp. Uh, they'll need to bring um, either uh, proof or documentation that they've uh, completed that merit or that they've completed those requirements uh, to be given to their merit badge counselor um, at at summer camp. So one of our camp staff members, and then from there, if the scout attends and participates in all that uh, we have during the week of, of camp, in theory, they should be able to earn it. Now, um, uh, within the merit badge requirements. Uh, it's no more, it's no less. We're going to do exactly what the, the requirement states. Uh, and so if a scout doesn't fulfill that, um, we'll be able to help coach you along on, on how you can complete that after camp. But the goal of the prereq sheet is to make sure that as many scouts can complete their merit badges at the end of summer camp as possible. All right. Super. Um, 
If you have any other uh, questions or uh, concerns, you can definitely uh, kick them in on the chat room. Um, we'll be happy to answer them. Is, and um, also, if you uh, don't want to kick them in on the chat, you can also send them to me in an email. Um, would also in encourage you that if you've not yet followed uh, Debray Scout Ranch on Facebook, uh, that you do so. Uh, that's where we'll be rolling out lots of um, information um, and also uh, be throwing out some teasers uh, and videos and photos as uh, the months come along as we get closer to summer camp. Uh, question came in, is a separate uh, CBC form required for adults? Um, the CBC form is the disclosure and authorization form um, when an adult becomes, uh, when an adult um, turns in their application. So not a separate one needs to be uh, completed, but, they do need to, but adults do need to be registered members of the Boy Scouts of America within your troop um, to come to camp. That answers that question. Um, Rich, asks, Rich asked the question um, about the prereqs. Um, would there be a similar form to what Cole has where Scoutmasters can sign off on prereqs? Um, yes, um, Rich, I would love to learn more about that. If you could send me an email, um, love to learn how that's operated up at Cole and if there's a way that we can provide that opportunity. Um, but ultimately, as we work on merit badges, there are, there are some things that um, it, a scout is trustworthy, um, but I also want to uh, trust and verify. And so utilizing uh, the scout masters at summer camp to verify that a scout has completed that requirement um, and held up the integrity of whatever that um, requirement stated are things that we can work on. Um, and then in regards to the payment uh, schedule, uh, this had also uh, come up. The uh, payment uh, schedule can be found on our website um, at michiganscouting.org. Uh, it, it is also listed within our leader's guide that we'll be rolling out here in uh, the coming days. Um, we're trying to get that out um, after our um, open houses are done this week. Um, so Rotary was yesterday, Debray uh, today, uh, Gerber has their open house tomorrow, and Cole's going to round things out on Thursday. So after we get done uh, with those open houses, we'll be um, posting that to the, to the website and also um, sending that information out to all of you so you guys can or so you guys can read that over. And again, the goal of, of our times right now is to make sure that you have all the information to um, know how to function within the camp that you're going to, to be attending this coming summer. You have all the resources. You can ask all the questions now because this is the time to ask. Um, and then also, if you're on the flip side of that, where you don't know quite yet where you're going to camp, uh, these open houses are meant to um, provide you with that detail so that you can make an informed decision. Uh, and if you're not quite sure, um, call one of us. I'm happy to talk with you. I believe everyone should come to Deber 8, but also know that the needs of your troop might be uh, different, and maybe your needs are better suited up at Cole or at Rotary or at a Gerber. Uh, and that's where we as the Outdoor Adventure team, uh, and I say team because that's what we really are. Uh, we are four uh, summer camps that really support one another and know that if I can't meet your needs at a Debray, one of our other camps can. And I want to make sure that you have, um, that we provide you with that experience that you're looking for. Um, so um, feel free to ask me um, or any of our other uh, team members that you can find on our website. Uh, we can let you know. Can troops do swim checks prior to camp or do they have to be done at camp? Uh, swim checks can be, can be done prior to summer camp. Uh, there is a unit swim check classification form uh, that can be uh, completed. Um, what you need to do is go to a, um, a local um, pool uh, that has a certified um, aquatics di uh, director, so a local pool, a YMCA, um, to complete your swim checks and you can do that there. Now, with that being said, um, if a scout comes to camp and shows on the swim check form that he is a swimmer or she's a swimmer, um, but sees that maybe they don't quite have that skill set, um, we, um, we have the authority to retest a scout um, because as a swimmer, they, we'd be putting them into some of the deeper water out at camp and they might be uh, going on the blob or an iceberg or something else within the water. And we want to make sure that they have um, strong skills um, to handle themselves when they're out there. Um, somebody else asked me, you're not sure when the meeting with COVID, um, but Trail to Eagle, or not Trail to Eagle, but Core 5 uh, down in Dearborn would be another opportunity uh, to complete your uh, swim check form as well. Um, so down in Dearborn, out of the Mohegan uh, District, um, uh, there's a team of guys that um, runs a Core 5 swimming program there. 
All right. I think we're rolling and catching up with the questions. My goal is to be done by 8 o'clock tonight and making sure I provided all of you the opportunity to ask some questions. Um, uh, Chris or Diana, anything else? Mike, anything that we might have missed or questions we might have asked or that still need to be addressed? I just popped on most recently, but so far you seem like on top of things. All righty. So um, as, we, as we round out, um, stay tuned um, uh, on our website and our um, MI Scouter uh, newsletter and on um, Facebook as we formally um, roll out and introduce our new uh, uh, summer camp director and DBRA program director for our year-round operation, which is Joe Lewis. Um, I'm excited for him to get to know each and every one of you. Um, he's on this call uh, somewhere uh, listening in because he doesn't work for us quite yet, um, but I wanted to make sure that he got to uh, um, participate and hear all the things that you're going to be hearing because uh, he's ready to hit the ground running. He actually gave me a call yesterday uh, asking if he could come out to DBRA and just drive around because he wants to reacclimate himself with all that the ranch has to offer. So um, if any, um, I'm going to stick on the call here for another five or so minutes. If you have another question, please feel free to type it, type it into the chat room and we'll be able to address those. Otherwise, if you um, feel free to give me a phone call or an email uh, and I can help your unit um, make a decision on uh, where to attend summer camp or uh, excited to hear that you guys are already signed up for summer camp. Um, but again, uh, excited for all of you uh, to participate in one of our camping operations this summer. Um, 21 is going to be the summer to get back at it. And we um, in the outdoor adventure world and at DeBray are really excited to be able to um, to serve you and to provide each and every one of you with that legendary camp um, experience. Uh, and at DeBray, uh, we're excited to bring you back home to the ranch. So again, thank you everyone. Really appreciate it. I'm excited to um, sip uh, coffee and sing some camp songs with, with all of you as uh, the summer rolls around. Uh, if you make a mean, mean uh, cobbler, uh, I'm a sucker for a cobbler. I'd be happy to come by your campsite. Um, but again, uh, it's going to be a fun summer and uh, I'm excited to serve you all. So thank you guys. Any other uh, questions, please feel free to pop those in the chat. And otherwise, I'll see you guys in email land, YouTube land, Facebook land, whatever it might be. <laughs>